And today I'm going to make a stand for my mobile phone, or actually for a friend's mobile phone, but rather than just being a boring stand, it's also going to be a charger, so it's going to have a wireless charger, a QI charger, uh, in the back of it. So this is my prototype, um, <coughs> using this puck style. Puck style only has a single coil, so they don't charge quite as well as the triple coil style. Uh, and there's a pocket in the back with a groove cut out for the cable. But to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to make it a two-sided carving uh, and carve these concentric rings in it so that it adds a bit of detail and I don't know, fill it with some jarrow or something like that. I'm going to use Tassie Oak for the material for the stand. Um, if this all <laughs> works and goes according to plan, I might then also do a second one in jarrow or blackwood or something a bit more exotic. As per usual, we're going to use easel. Uh, and I'm going to import a couple of SVGs because this can't be done in a single part. So this is the rough uh, view of what I am going to be cutting out. There's a few things to notice. One, I've got these four holes and they are so that the workpiece can be flipped and re-centered back on the exact same spot. Because when I import the second part or the other layer, it's overlaid exactly where we want it to be. So. First up, I need to set up a waste board so that I can do just the drilling operation. So I'll actually get rid of everything but these four dots and tell easel to drill a little bit further through than the material actually is. So say my material is actually 13 mil. I'm going to come in and say it's 15 mil so that it goes all the way through my waste board and I can insert some dowels to properly hold everything down. After the four holes were drilled, I added the dowels, flush trimmed them, and I went back into easel. Here is where the errors started. The dowels were supposedly 6mm, but they varied in diameter from 5.5 up to about 7mm. The lesson learned here was not to trust store-bought dowels and instead make them myself. I then start cutting out the actual shape and recess for the QI charger. By using the same home position, it meant everything was placed exactly where I wanted it. Tassie oak is a bit of a pain to work with normally and particularly using a router it tears out and burns like nobody's business. All things considered I was actually really happy with how the X-carve cut. Everything was nice and clean and burn free. I did however have very conservative feed and depth rates which later on I adjusted. Once that side was done, I jogged the X-carve over on the X-axis by about half an inch. This gave me a bit of room to get in with a chisel and pry everything off so I could then flip it. This is where things really started to go wrong though. In my initial design, I didn't accurately place the circles for the dowel, so when it was flipped, it was actually off-center. Now this was an issue entirely with me and I fixed it in a later design.
and then disaster. Confirmation that I am an idiot and instead of putting in 0.5 millimeters deep for the concentric circles, I put in 1.5 millimeters deep and cut all the way through. I made another attempt at the project, but since the cutting process was the same, I didn't film it. This one had the updated uh, design, so everything was better centered when flipped. Before cutting the circles, I tested that the concept worked fine, and you can see that it was charging the phone through the wood. I then needed to fill the circles with something, but I was a bit unsure what. My wife had picked up some scrap veneer from her school and I gave it a shot with no luck. You can clearly see that I needed to use some tape to hold it down properly or put a substrate of some sort. It wasn't until after I'd abandoned this idea and moved onto epoxy that I realised I just needed to use something smaller and less aggressive uh, or make a negative piece, glue that in and then sand off the excess. As I said, I went for epoxy in the end, and to make it look interesting, I used a drop of blue dye. A single drop apparently will tint an entire litre of resin. If I had have thought of epoxy ahead of time, what I should have done before machining that side was coat it with a layer of shellac. Tazzy oak is particularly porous, so it absorbed the coloured epoxy and left stains. After the epoxy dried, which given the sub 10 degrees we were experiencing in Melbourne at the moment, took a very long time. I was able to clean up and sand back the epoxy mess. Unfortunately, in an attempt to clean up some of the staining, I sanded through one of the rings. Back onto making the stand functional, I cut a 30 degree bevel off and then cut an extra piece with the same bevel to act as a shelf for the phone to sit on. Alternatively, if your phone has a metal case, you could use some neodymium magnets embedded in the back of the stand. I also cut a piece to act as support and cut a groove in that to hide and channel the cable. After the shelf was glued on and dried, I used some thick CA glue and accelerator to glue on the support. It isn't going to take a lot of weight load and since it's an end grain join, the CA is probably a better choice than standard wood glue. I was able to use some tape to hold it in place and to act as a clamp. In my infinite wisdom, I failed to see that there is no way to get the head of the charging cable through the groove after glue up, so I had to come back and drill it out a little. I'll update the design so that's not needed.
So the phone stand is done and I think it actually turned out pretty well despite <laughs> the issues that I introduced into it. Um, the epoxy actually looks surprisingly good uh, other than the bits where it's sanded a bit too flush so a coat of shellac on that would stop the epoxy from seeping into the pores of the grain. Uh, the fit is fantastic for that, it's actually very much an interference fit. Uh, I'd need to pry that out with something now so there's no retaining clips or anything like that needed. Um, the, the little feet uh, help with the cable management but they also mean it's not tippy or anything like that uh, and the vibration phone won't transfer quite as much into a desk. So I will be making another one of these um, now that I've worked out the issues with two-sided machining which is mostly this guy right here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if I'm to make another one, there's a few little enhancements I might make, perhaps scalloping this out a little bit so that the phone has something positive to register into, but to be honest, that works pretty well, just like that. This isn't the only way to do two-sided machining. There are other ways using larger tabs like you'd normally have in an X-Carve project, or sorry, in an easel project. Um, but this way works pretty well, provided you've got the right size dowels. I'd almost be interested in getting some plastic dowels, uh, just so I know that they are the size that they say they are. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more two-sided machining videos and that sort of thing, or whether I should stick to projects that are apparently a bit more within the scope of my brain. Thanks for watching.